Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome to Arc Basics, a show where we break down the ABCs of how to start an arc, how to accomplish things, how to achieve things, how to be the best you possibly can be. That's right, we're going with the full ABCs of Arc. A for Arc, B for Basic, C for, well, whatever you want it to be. C can be anything. Welcome back to Arc Basics, I'm Flinger Fu, and today we're going to be talking about these little guys over here. The, they're called the Mo Shops. These guys, they wander around the beach, they're scared of everything, and here, let me see if I can find one that's alone that it won't aggro the other ones, because, let's see, what do you want? Yeah, Bee Honey, you can go. And they're just going to run. Whenever you punch one of them, they're just going to run. These guys, they're, they're really hard to aggro. About the only times these guys will ever hit you is if there's a whole bunch of them in range of each other and you pick up one of their eggs. If they're all by themselves, they'll still just run. But yeah, um, also if they're uh, running in fear, they're almost dead and they turn around, sometimes they can bite you. But they're not going to be able to do much damage. These guys never, ever do that much damage unless there's a couple ways they can actually get to do damage. If they're wild... No, that's just not going to happen. But you will come to find out these guys are the kings of gathering just about everything. But there's a couple things that you're going to need to get in order to uh, um, tame these guys. And which is why it was important that we handled getting the Ichthyornis out of the way. Because Ichthyornis is very important when it comes to taming Mo Shops. Alright, so hey, let's go gather some stuff. I'm going to go explain where to get some of the um, things to... I'm a hat uh, to uh, tame up a Mo Shops, and then I'll be right back. Because first, we've got to go get some giant bee honey, which is pretty easy, but yeah. On the island, it's a little bit harder to get because sometimes it spawns up way high. You just have to look for a uh, beehive that's down lower. On Ragnarok, stuff like that, you can usually just walk up and pick them up. On on, on uh, the center, on... Uh, aberration on uh, scorched earth they're so much easier you can just walk up and you just pick up the honey on the island you have to look around a little bit but that's what we're gonna do so hey um and also we have to go up we have to go find some um organic polymer and we've got to find some rare flowers and we've got to find some uh um oh mushrooms let's see and we've also got to go get some cooked lamb chops because these are things that these guys could need. We're also going to need either cooked prime meat or cooked prime meat jerk or prime meat jerky. Make sure you have some of that stuff. Um, how you make the prime meat jerky is you take cooked prime meat, you put it inside of, pres of a preserving bin with oil and spark powder, and it will slowly over time make jerky for you. It takes a while, but I would recommend if you plan on um, taming a Mo Shops, make sure you get that prime meat jerky going. As you're uh, doing the lower levels, if you kill something that gives prime meat, pop down a campfire. Lo um, put that uh, prime meat on there because prime meat doesn't stack unless it's cooked. So that's one of the easiest ways of storing prime meat anyway, is just by cooking it off as soon as you get it inside campfires. Sometimes you can have three, four, ten campfires rocking at one time just to get as much of that stuff going as possible. And that way there, prime, uh, cooked prime meat stacks up to uh, 30 once it's cooked. In your inventory, it only has a stack of one when it's not cooked. So yeah, that's the easiest way to store prime meat. Also, prime meat jerky stacks up to 30 as well. And it also lasts so much longer and it has so much more uses than regular cooked prime meat. And then also, make sure that you can get your cooked lamb chops. Just like with the prime meat, if you go, you find an ovus and then it, say it's like dead, a raptor just killed it. Race down there, eat that um, raptor's face, eat that uh, um, ovus before it's able to eat it, and then take all that mutton and cook it off as quick as you can with a bunch of campfires. It's usually the best way of saving a whole bunch of lamb chops. That way there, later on, if you want to get like thylacoli or something like that, which we will cover in another episode of Basics, you have that stuff readily available. It's a good tactic to get into. It's a great way to store all that extra meat that you get. And also in the lower levels, you're going to need some cooked prime meat. You're going to need some cooked mutton. So yeah, let's let's go handle a few things. Let's go see if we can get some uh, um, giant bee honey. And my bird just pooped on my shoulder. Dude, I told you not to do that. Not while we're recording. We're going to go get some giant bee honey. We're going to go get some rare flowers. We're going to go get some rare mushrooms. We're going to go get some cooked prime meat. We're going to go get some prime meat jerky. We're going to go get some cooked lamb chop. And then the other stuff, we can probably just do on the fly. And I'll show you how to um, handle this stuff. How to um, tame a Mo Shops. How to get um, the most use out of these guys that you possibly can. All right, and here we are on the island. And um, we're over across the Redwoods. And a lot of people think that in the Redwoods is the... 
Fog, leave me alone. All right, now, when the, a lot of people think that in the Redwoods is the best place to get honey. Um, at higher levels, with on the back of a bear, yeah, it's really good at getting honey. But there's other places of getting honey if you're not super high level, like right here. Okay, now, um, what you want to understand is these bees are gonna kick the crap out of you. It's gonna happen. Um, I would recommend that if you do have access to ghillie armor, use ghillie armor. If not, then sometimes you just have to say, what the heck? Alright, um, let's see, can we get up there? Come on, I'm on! Alright, uh, we might have to do some fancy climbing here. Alright, let's see. Can we just land up here, Super Dodo? There we go. Can we hop off up here, Super Dodo? All right. Hey, we've got Bee Honey. All right, now I want to make sure, before I do this, that he is on follow, and then he is also on neutral. I want to make sure that when um, these bees attack me, and they're going to attack me, that they are, uh, that my Super Dodo is going to defend me. All right, we're going to take that. Let's get out of here. They're going to come hurt us. All right, all right. Stop hitting me! Stop hurting my Super Dodo! Alright, but yeah, they're not gonna last too long, but they will last a little bit. And if they hit you while you're on the back of a dino, they will knock you off. Unless if you're... Riding a uh, dire bear. The only way that they're not going to knock you off is if you're um, riding a dire bear. Yes. Okay, so now we're going to go uh, get some uh, rare flowers and some mushrooms. Now, both of those come from over in the swamp. The easiest way to get them is over in the swamp. So I'm going to head over there. I'm going to show you how I get those. See you in a minute. All right, down here at the swamp, and I'm going to show you one of the easiest ways of getting... Where are you running from? Oh, snake. All right, let's kill this snake real quick. Get this out of the way. Come on, dude. Wow, there's a lot of snakes in the weeds. All right. Let's get these guys out of here. Okay, cool. Now that we've got them done. Okay, we've got the landing area cl kind of clear. we got one more. Sorry about this. All right, there we go. Okay, so now that we've got the area clear, these little cattails right here, these are the best ways of getting rare flowers. Just go down and handpick them. See right there? Rare flower, rare flower, and uh, let's see. Just keep going until you get a few of them. You're going to need some of these before you start uh, taming your uh, Mo Shops because chances are they're going to ask for them. Okay, and it's random each time what they ask for. Um, they are one of the easiest tames that you could possibly tame, but you just have to be prepared for it. Let's see, how many do I got? And then also, all these Tinto Berries, keep them as well, because they can request them. They can also request uh, Mezzo Berries. And we got four rare flowers, that should be good. All right, now we're going to go for the, uh, the mushrooms. The mushrooms are just as easy. Actually, the mushrooms are easier. You want to grab your pick and come down just a little bit from the, uh, from the cattails and come down and start whacking on these, these trees right here at the edge of the swamps. Oh, sorry. Super Dodo, go land. Go land. Oh boy. All right. So yeah, um, and then just hacking down these trees will give you a bunch of rare mushrooms. Now, rare mushrooms actually have a spoil timer, just like the rare flowers, but it's a long spoil timer. So if you get a whole bunch of them, and then they stack up really high, so if you get a bunch of them, you're really not going to have too big of a problem. And also, if uh, later on in the game, if you go through and say you have a beaver, just go through and just hack down all that stuff, you can get so many uh, rare mush um, yeah, mushrooms. It's really, fu it's really funny how fast you can get them. All right, now we're going to go cover something that the wiki doesn't cover, but I'm positive that it's a thing. Um, Dodo Dex does have it as one of the taming things, and I have, in my experience, had them, uh, request it. Um, we're gonna go make sure that we get some organic polymer, because they can be used for taming, uh, Mo Shops, because sometimes they can request it. Now, like I said, the wiki do um, claims that, um, well, it doesn't have it listed. Dodo Dex does, and I've had, in my experience, them require organic polymer. So I'm gonna go show you a really good way of getting organic polymer. 
All right, now up here, uh, let me open up the map. Bam, up, way up here, up in the cold zone, this is the easiest spot of getting organic polymer. Okay, now if uh, you're lo you lower levels and you come up here on say like a raft, which with lead sickness you can make it still, but um, I would recommend that you wear uh, um, hide armor or fur armor if you have that available and you put campfires on your raft and come up here. But just remember, lead sickness are a thing. Or you can come up here with a Pteranodon or with a Pelagorna, stuff like that. Some, just something that'll get you to fly up here without having to deal with lead sickness. And also, if you're going to fly up here, make sure that you're warm. Make sure you work on that fortitude skill a little bit and carry a torch. Torches do help with um, taking the edge off the cold. So now, we're gonna come up here to these little dudes up here, the penguins, the Kairuku, and we're going to gank them. Now we're just gonna gank them just like this. With our bird, wasting them a little bit by little bit, one at a time, and then using our claws. Now if you hop off and you want to harvest them by hand, the easiest and most effective way of getting these guys is by using a club to get down there. But I don't wanna do that. I don't wanna take the amount of time right now to do that. But yeah, if you get down, you just whack it with a club, you turn it into just, you basically make wheat, meat waffles out of them. That is one of the easiest ways of getting uh, um, organic polymer. And you see, just from that little bit, we already have 29 organic, po organic polymer. That is, that is more than enough. All right, so now that we've got most of our stuff, now we have to go cook off some prime meat. I'm gonna have to go get some meat jerky um, from over at my base, plus also some, um, oh, uh, cooked mutton from over at my base. Uh, these are things that a lot of people have on hand. I have it on hand, but just know that eventually you're gonna need this stuff. So if you don't already have it on hand, get it on hand. Put it in your refrigerators, put it in your preserving pens, and then make sure that you uh, pay very close attention to it. All right, so hey, yeah, I'm gonna see you guys down there, and now it's time to tame us some Mo Shops. Okay, so back over here, by where the Mo Shops are. Now, there's a little trick when it comes to taming Mo Shops that makes it a lot easier. Okay, so now you pop down like this, and then down here, and then you take four of these and four of these. Four fence foundations. You set them down. Now, this doesn't work on public... Um, PvE servers, but on every other server it does work. Um, on public PvE servers, you just have to follow them around. Or you can, uh, lure them in by scaring them, and then hopefully you can get them, uh, tucked inside of one of these little pens. Alright, oh, I already have that right here. Alright, now you take this, go like this, bam, 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 bam. Small little contained area. Now you just have to go pick one of them up, and then drop it inside of here. Right there. Just like that. Now he's just going to wander around. He's not going to be able to get out. He's just going to chill out. Now we want to walk up to him. We want to see what he needs. This guy right here needs measure berries. Okay, so now um, when you walk up to them, you'll be able to see exactly what it says. See right there. It says feed measure berry. You take the measure berry and you put it down on your zero slots. So let's feed him. Oh wow, you were a level 55 and that gave you one. Okay, we might have to do a couple of these just to show you how uh, um, um, these guys get tamed. But also, we have the Ichthy Ornus, so where if he needs any kind of uh, um, cooked meat, we're going to make a campfire. We're going to put a campfire right next to here, so let's go do that really quick. Get this. Uh, let's see, uh, camp. We're going to need some flint. Uh, stone and flint. Let's go get that really quick. So, and as that guy needs... Oh. As that guy, um... Oh, sits. He's Well, he's gonna need to sit in between each one of these um, feedings. And it's gonna take a little bit between each one. And usually the first one is the worst. Okay, so let's get over here. Get this. Make a campfire. And then we're going to take this campfire and we're going to put it right next to this little pen of ours. So where as he needs cooked prime meat, as he needs uh, cooked fish meat, we can just cook it right off and then feed it to him. Um, and then we have the ichthyornis, so where if he needs the uh, cooked prime meat, we can just go um, get a dodo on the beach and then... Uh, 
throw um get the prime meat from the dodo using the ichthyornis or if he needs um cooked fish meat or any kind of raw prime fish meat we can come right out here to the water and we can get these little piranhas and stuff like that all right come on buddy let's come on up here i'm just gonna have this guy on uh on tap, pretty much. Just let him sit up here. And that's why these uh, Ichthyornis are so amazing. So, this guy right here spoils in five minutes. Cool, we've got five minutes to see what this guy needs. Oh, and he just wants two measure berries. That was super easy. They're not always that easy. Sometimes you can get lucky, and you can get some interesting stuff. But now, let's get this guy, because I know one of them wanted bee honey. And let's take this guy and just put this guy right inside of here. And these taming pens work really well with uh, the really high level mo shops. The lower level mo shops, not so much. The higher level ones. This guy wants Tinto Berries. Okay, so we'll take Tinto Berries, put it down in here. Bam. Oh, that was easy. All right, let's go see if we can find a really high level one so I can show you guys. All right, I'm going to go look for a really high level one and I'll bring you guys back just to show you just how difficult these guys can be. All right, I was able to find a 135 just down the beach. He'll do. All right, this guy needs a rare mushroom. All right, so now we're going to take rare mushrooms, and we're going to put those down in our zero slot, and we're going to walk up. We're going to feed that little sucker. All right, oh, he's only going to need one more. Okay, so apparently uh, they're not going to need all that much. Yeah, okay, let's see. Uh, we're going to wait for him to be hungry again. All right, and we're back. And this guy, he wants rare flowers. Okay, so now we'll take the rare flowers, put it down in here. Bam, we got him. All right, so now that's what it takes to tame Mo Shops. Um, they're actually pretty easy, but you just have to make sure that you have everything that you need on hand when you want to start taming them. Uh, sometimes you can get lucky, like with the uh, one dude that wanted uh, two measure berries. Yeah, most of the times you're not going to get that lucky. Sometimes you can, most times you can't. All right, so let's grab him. Let's get him out of here. And then we're going to go discuss what these guys can do. And you'll realize that once you uh, um, open up their uh, little wheel here, they have a new thing. It's view harvesting levels. Every time they level up, they will get um, a level in this for each level that they get regularly. So for every level they get, they get one level of their ta of their uh, harvesting. Now, let me explain some of these because there's a lot of confusion on what some of these do. Okay, so some of these are for only when they're passively wandering. Um, say if they're they're just like wandering next to something. And then some things is when you're actively harvesting. Um, and you'll notice that the ones that you're actively harvesting are kind of, uh, it's two here and then there's two here. Okay, the sap, the rare flower, and the rare mushroom. Those ones right there, are they're just passive. They're um, when they're wandering. The sap is, say, if they're in the redwoods or if they're... Actually, no, the sap is only on scorched earth. It's when they're wandering next to the Joshua trees. The little trees that have the Archaeopteryx on them. Yeah, um, if you take one of these pens and you put it right next to a patch of... Uh, um, uh, uh, Joshua trees on scorched earth and you just put these guys inside the pen, put them on wander, they'll come back to you with sap over time. All right, now the same thing is with rare flowers when it comes to, um, oh, uh, um, aberration also on the island and stuff. Put them down next to uh, places that yield rare um, flowers, and then they'll just, over time, give you rare flowers. Same thing goes with rare mushrooms. Um, if you uh, um, make one of these little pens and you put them in the little pen right next to things that yield um, rare mushrooms, they will eventually get you rare mushrooms just by wandering. Yes. Okay, now the, uh, um, the raw prime meat, and the raw fish meat, these are ends right here, they're active. Okay, so say if we... I think that piranha failed. All right. But yeah, if you uh, take and you harvest anything that yields um, rare prime meat or uh, um, rare um, prime fish meat, or raw pri prime fish meat and raw prime meat, if you harvest anything with these guys, they'll give you increased. Now, um increased amounts now also with the organic polymer remember up there where we had the kairuku and stuff like that anything that yields um organic polymer will give you extra okay same thing with leech blood if you're harvesting up leech blood or from leeches and stuff um and also from uh death worms on scorched earth they'll give you increased amounts of that as well now when it says weight 100 percent, that is actually or weight 100 percent, and then quantity 100 percent. um when it says weight that means it's going to reduce the weight of the amount of that resource that's in the inventory of the um, mo shops 
So say um, if you give it one level and it ups it um, just a little bit here. Let's uh, ride this guy around. Well, actually, we don't even have to ride this guy around. We can just level him up right now. All right, he just has one level from just sitting here. So we're going to give him a pump and wait. Okay, so now that we open up this, see, now we have one available. We're going to take this and we're going to put this in... Uh... Let's go raw prime meat. Okay, now you'll see that he has 103.2%. That means that he's going to be able to, um, he has a weight reduction of a 3.2% when it comes onto that. So he's going to uh, reduce for every 100 points of weight, it's gonna come down 3.2% or 3.2 points. All right, now the quantity, every time he harvests anything that yields raw prime meat, He's going to give you, for every 100 pieces of prime meat you get, he's going to give you 3.5. These levels stack up quite considerably. So say if um, you get put enough points into him, so he has 200% weight, he's, that means he's going to get half weight reduction, 50% across the board. Um, it's only going to weigh half. If he has a quantity of 200%, he's going to get double the amount. The, every time you harvest. So say if you hit like um, a T-Rex that's harvested on the ground or that's dead on the ground, if you would have gotten five raw prime meat from that T-Rex, you instead would have gotten 10. Yes, and it's gonna weigh less, it's gonna be better, it's gonna be awesome. All right, so now let's just take, and we can ride this guy now. All right, this is actually a thing that you can do now. Let's uh, reduce our weight just a little bit because I've got a bunch of crap in my inventory. All right, let's uh, bam, bam, uh, bam, bam. Put that in there, that, that. We're not going to need any of this stuff. All right, and we're not going to need that. All right, so let's take this and let's put this back down here. Now we can ride this guy, and this is actually one of the ways that you can get these guys to actually do damage. When you're on ground and you're harvesting stuff with these guys, um, they can do some serious damage. Yeah, they're not going to do a ton of damage, but the benefit of these guys is they can harvest anything yeah they're not the most efficient they're not the most effective but they can harvest anything if you can hit it with these guys they can harvest it except for stone and metal they can't harvest that because it's 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 anything within reason pretty much um i shouldn't have said everything but they are also on um, one of the only dinos um uh, like the dire bear and the uh um Oh, uh, Gigantopithecus and the Therizino, they can get fiber from bushes. That It's it's really cool what they can do. But also, um, their food that they eat, they will eat just about anything. They'll eat meat, they'll eat berries, they'll eat uh, fish meat, they'll eat just about anything. Uh, they just won't eat stone or anything like that. Nothing eats stone other than uh, rock golem. All right, but yeah, now that we've got these guys, um, they if you get one of these guys at a low enough level, you will be able to level these guys up and make them your buddy. It's actually pretty cool what you can do with these guys. Let's give you a little bit more. You know what, let's let's see how much you hit for. I wanna see, 310% melee damage. Let's go see what you hit for. All right, where is a dodo or something? All right, here we are. And let's go see what happens when we hit this Moshops. See, now he's actually doing some serious damage. Now this Moshops right here, it's uh, mate boosted. So he's got that going on for him. So he's going to take reduced damage. All right, now he's taking 99 points. That's actually rather impressive, is 99 points. Now, also, one other thing I want to discuss with these guys is they are cowards. Absolute cowards. If we hop off this guy and we send him to attack another Mo Shops, another anything, he's going to run. He's going to bolt. These guys will not attack anything for you. And they're, they'll run up to it, and then they'll go, Nope, I'm out of here. And they're going to take off. They will not tank for you if they're not ridden. So be careful of that. And also, if you put these guys on um, aggressive when they're out in the wild, they're not going to go fight anything. They're going to run away from everything. As soon as they see it, they're going to run. Okay, now um, if you are fighting something and you have them on um, neutral or passive, they're, um, they'll only run if they're directly attacked. So you can take them in, say, like a caravan if you've got a couple of them with you. Um, they'll only run if, say, like a saber tooth or something comes up and hits it. Then they'll run. But if, the, if you're just attacking with a different dino, they're not going to run then, which is kind of... You can kind of... Use that a little bit, I guess. I mean, it's not really that effective. But just be careful when out and about with these guys, hopping off these guys when in combat or something, because if, they, if they're if they in combat, 
they're not going to stick up for you. They're not going to be your buddy. No matter how much you feed them, no matter how much you love them, they're going to leave your ass to die. That's what's going to happen. All right. So, yeah, I hope this video helped you out. I hope uh, this uh, covers a few more, a few questions or all the questions you guys might have had about the Mo Shops. If you have any more questions or if I forgot something, make sure you leave it down in the comments down below. I appreciate that. And I like to have the conversation down there. All right. So, hey, um, if you like the video, make sure you click the like button. I really appreciate that. Um, if you're new around here, subscribe. And until next time, this is Flinger Foo. And take it easy, everybody.